Good morning. It's Sunday morning again. Uh, today we're going to be preaching this morning at the church and uh, doing the music and preaching. So I thought maybe that we'd walk through a, the different ways of studying the Bible. Well, at least some of them. Uh, this morning I'm I'm going to be studying expositorially. That means uh, I'm going to just be taking one piece of scripture and looking at it and uh, preaching off it. Uh, I feel like the Lord's been leading me to check out Romans chapter 5, so that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. The other ways that you could study the Bible or preach a message, you can topical. So that's where you feel led to research a topic in the Bible and learn about that, whether that be uh, marriage or, you know, how God feels about any given article, you know, and you can research that and then you can teach or preach on that to let people know, or, or maybe just for your own benefit so you can learn. So topical. You can do it by person, right? You can uh, research a certain person in the Bible, Job, Job or Noah or David or somebody, or Jesus. Uh, you could research, or the Holy Spirit, great research study on that. Uh, one of the better ways to study the Bible, topical. You can do it chronologically. Chronologically means that you start, well, there's actually two ways to, when you think about chronologically, one way is the order of time, right? And that's typically how most people would think chronologically would go, the oldest to the newest. And uh, that's not the order that the Bible's put in, by the way. But that is helpful. I read the chronological Bible from cover to cover, and um, I don't know, I didn't get a lot out of it that way. But, uh, but that is where I did learn about the timeline. And it was interesting to understand that Adam was still alive at the time of Noah's grandfather. Right? And that is, most people, you know, that's way into the Bible. Most people think that, you know, these people come and go. And, but in the, according to the Word of God, before the flood, there was no such thing as rain. Matter of fact, that was the first rain on the earth was the flood but mist would come up out of the earth and water everything and um it was it's believed that the pressures on the earth were different right the the atmospheric pressure and everything and maybe even the rotation of the earth was different you know uh some some believe that god caused a, a great change and that that's when the the earth tilted on its axis and started wobbling others believe that you know, some major occurrence happened that that changed the environment. Some major occurrence happened that changed the environment of man at that time. We don't really know what. That might be a good study. We could check that out. Uh, the other chronological way is in order of the books of the Bible. Now, the, now, when I say in order of the books of the Bible, I'm talking about the canonized King James Version. There are other canonized versions of the Bible that include more books what we call apocrypha books, which basically means that they were rejected to be canonized for one reason or another. Either they were found to be false, or they they directly contradicted something they knew was, was true. Right? That, that doesn't necessarily mean it was false, it just means that it was a, too big of a contradiction to include. Or the source of it uh, was obviously untrue. In other words, um, they would look at the letters from Paul, say, and uh, and then they would have another book that was supposedly from Paul, Paul, but the the uh, writing style and the language and the verbiage used was so different that it was obvious that it was not the same author. So they would reject that and call that an apocryphal book. So the standard canonized version of the Bible, King James, is what I'm talking about when I say chronologically through the Bible from beginning to end. Now, uh, the Catholic version of the Bible includes a lot more books. Uh, so does the, the Jewish canonical Bible. It, it includes a lot more books. Uh, there's other, <clears throat> other canonized versions of the Bible. 
that also include more books. Now I'm not talking about about other books entirely, like the one of Joseph Smith and Mormons use, that type of thing. I'm just talking about other books that would can be considered that were being considered for the biblical canon of books that we call the Bible. Okay, so uh, chronologically through the Bible, that's that's one way that you can study the Bible and preach on it. And that is very informative because it gives you a foundation. It helps you to understand where people are coming from. Um, now, when studying chronology, you have to think of anachronism. I think that's the word. Let's look. Anna, Anna something. Uh, and... Uh, Yeah, anachronism. Anachronism. That's the misplacing of something outside of its time period. Whether that's a belief or an understanding of text or even an event. Uh, the problem is that in time, culture changes and the meaning of the words change. For instance, the word text. Uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, you would say the word text and it automatically meant a piece of writing like a book. You know, nowadays you say the word text, it means what you do on your phone, instant messaging. You know, so if you do a search on text, you're gonna get a whole bunch of instant messaging stuff. But anachronism says when somebody, that's, that's, Applying to uh, an extreme, there's pro I think there's another word for it too. When you take a value from today and apply it to a situation in antiquity, and that's a problem in understanding the Bible, in understanding any text, in any any an antiquity thing, anything from old, because things change. A perfect example. Let me think. A perfect example. Uh, how about the marrying age of girls? We'll look at that. Now, um, in the U.S., uh, a, a minor is anybody that's under the 18. And you have to have parental consent to marry any girl that's under the age of 18. And uh, there's also, you know, I think you can't even marry if you're under the age of 16. I'm not sure what the law is. But in antiquity... Right? People only live to 30 years old and 32 because of all kinds of sickness and plagues. On top of that, the uh, average lady given birth, she would lose well over 50% of her children. They would die because either in childbirth, and it was not uncommon for both to die in childbirth because there was no, no real medical, and uh, or in the time directly after childbirth by a host of different things whether that be sickness or attacks or you know all kinds of stuff so as a result the need to to uh, progenate to extend the human race was great so girls would get married much sooner usually right about the time of puberty you know they would they would end up getting uh, engaged or whatever and then they would start having babies early in their teens. well that was that culture and that was needed for that culture and uh even you know that's something that is past now but when we look at something like that today and we view it through our glasses of what we understand to be legal and moral for today we don't understand it at all and i'm this is a touchy subject I think I, I turned off the rabbit trail a little bit here. This is not what I'm supposed to be talking about. But the idea, let's just wash all that away. Here's the thing. The culture changes. The environment changes. As science and medicine increases, life, life is elongated. And uh, as a result of invention and the changing of the of what words mean we can't place our values and cultures on the past and it's hard to take their value values and cultures and place it on us today we have to really read the context the main ideas are there but so studying the word in chronolo 
chronologically and we have to we have to realize sometimes that the Word of God and, and anything that we're, even text, here's the idea that I'm trying to point out is that things change. And because things change, you have to really look at context and understand different things. And so we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 5 as I put together a message this morning. All right? All right. I'll see you in a while. Deep inside my heart, you placed your dream. Telling me you'll always be by my side. That is my word, I'm King of Kings, and as King of Kings, it's uncontestable. They, so, not only all them, those people, not only they have to believe it, but guess who else has to believe it? All right, we're here to measure a window with our friends. It takes three of us to measure the window. Ed, how do you correctly measure a window? You gotta measure the window from inside to inside. Inside to inside, so. So, 15 and um. Where's your tape measure? Quarter right here, Stanley. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Stanley, okay, <laughs> show, it, show it, show it. So, so yes, 15 and a quarter by 44 and 5 eighths. See, it took three of us. All three. Now it's the lost and unsaved I see. 